Hey, I'm Mac. Welcome back to my channel. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon for access to new videos 12 to 24 hours early. Welcome to 2022, you guys. Last year at this time, I had 94 subscribers and each of them were incredible and kept me going with their likes and their comments. And I'm so grateful for them and for all of you who have joined along the way in 2021. Like, wow. Um, <laughs> Let's keep this going. Being that this is the season of New Year's resolutions, meaning goals that people think they will be motivated enough to do next year, even though they aren't motivated enough to start that goal in December, I thought that we would take a look at a self-help video. This might be a little bit controversial, but this is just my opinions. And if you like this person, please try to be open minded and just just hear me out. We're going to watch a video from motivational speaker and author Mel Robbins. You know, the same Mel Robbins who spoke at Mon Nations 2021. And before you start trying to justify her appearing there, um, there's no excuse for not knowing about the organization you are accepting money from. And if Mel Robbins doesn't have staff that look into companies before associating with them, then that, frankly, is reckless in asking for PR nightmares. She knew what she was getting into and she just wasn't bothered by that, okay? It's not that she didn't know or anything. That's why she didn't say that she didn't know, okay? Uh, okay, great. So I saw that she had a video that was titled Four Proper Steps to Manifest According to Science and wow, wasn't I just asking what the fuck manifesting was? And it says science right there in the title. That means it's all true. Let's go! Hey, I'm Mel Robbins, and I'm going to teach you the four simple steps that you need to follow in order to manifest the right way, according to research and science. I'm so glad you're watching this. Manifesting. I'm so glad I'm watching it too, Mel. Is an incredible skill to develop in your life and to practice and build consistently as something that you do. My definition of manifesting is manifesting when you do it following the four steps you're about to learn according to research and science. What manifesting does is it trains your mind, your body, your spirit to align with what you want to achieve in life. Manifesting is a way to prepare or socialize your mind and your nervous system and your body to do the work that's necessary to getting what you want. And so the steps that I'm going to walk you through work, they're based in research. And what they're doing is they remove all of the obstacles that would normally stop you from taking action. Because just thinking about what you want isn't going to get it done. What ultimately creates results in your life are actions. And so manifesting is a way to train yourself to take the actions that will change your life, that will help you get what you want. Manifesting also removes self-doubt, resistant, excuses, imposter syndrome, all the things that would normally stop you from taking the actions. The four steps that you need to... Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Um, maybe I'm dense or something, but first of all, it sounds very appealing that it's going to remove all of the obstacles. So there's going to be no obstacles from here on out. So that's great. And um, wait a minute. So she actually says that taking action is what creates results, right? Thinking won't do anything. Uh, it's not exactly a mind blowing revelation there. And second of all, aren't 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 you just teaching us how to think, though? Because isn't that what manifesting is? I mean, I know there was a bunch of gobbledygook in there about like, your spirit aligning or whatever, but I don't know what that means. To me, it sounds like we're talking about thinking. So thinking's not not good enough, but here's how to do more thinking, right? Okay, okay. I mean, you could just skip that and go to the action. Follow, really simple. Step number one is give yourself permission to dream with the lid off. This is really important. And the reason why this is important is because I guarantee you that right now you are not even allowing yourself to fully dream or 
think about or set goals that are truly aligned with what you deeply want in your heart that you aren't even able to manifest properly because you're not even honest with yourself about what you actually want. This is a really common thing because you're allowing your self-doubt, you are allowing your fears, your anxiety, your insecurity, you're allowing where you are to dictate and limit where you want to go. And so step one, super important, you must allow yourself give yourself permission to start dreaming with the lid off. Now, the scientific reason why this is so important is because you have a filter in your brain called the reticular activity system. I write about the RAS for short, the reticular activity system extensively in the high five habit. The RAS is a filter in your mind and you can do simple things that change the structure of that filter. In fact, the filter in your mind, the RAS, is always changing. So one thing that you can do in order... Okay, um, maybe someone can correct me if, if there's some new finding out there, but <laughs> the, reticular, the reticular activating system, it, it, it does act as a filter, however... I have never seen any um, scientific literature or any read any papers about it describing it as as this kind of filter, as being like a filter on things that you are considering doing. It's it's a filter in the sense of the reticular formation is what um, kind of decides if input that is coming in is relevant or if you should just ignore it and not even consider it. Like someone who's lived in a city for a long time can probably sleep even through like sirens and traffic because the reticular formation has decided like, okay, that is just a constant noise. So we're just going to ignore it. Whereas like if, um, I don't know, if all of a sudden you hear like a really loud bang, like if, uh, I don't know, a car crash happens outside and it's it's super loud and it's just like boom like your reticular formation is you're going to be like what was that because it was it was sudden it was loud and it wasn't like normal um so <laughs> that's how i've heard the filter of the reticular system described i've never heard it in in terms of like what like in terms of what desires you're giving yourself permission to have i've always heard it when it when we're talking about um which stimuli to bother allocating brain processing power to because that that's basically one of the core functions of the reticular system is it functions in attention so if something's just a constant if it's just no if if a signal is just noise you're uh, reticular system is just going to be like, yeah, we, we're not even going to notice that that's there. <laughs> that's what it does. But, uh, I mean, if there's, if there's a new finding out there that I'm not aware of, uh, someone let me know. To teach yourself how to dream with the lid off is to adopt a simple habit. Every single morning I do a very simple thing. I write down five things that I want. That's it. When I start my day, after I get up when the alarm rings, I make my bed, I pull on my exercise clothes, I set an intention, I high five myself in the mirror, I then go out into the kitchen, I crack open my high five journal, and then inside the journal there are prompts that walk me through the steps of visualizing. And the first prompt is dream with the lid off. Set your spirit free. Write down five things every how in the hell am I going to keep dreaming if you're making me wake up to write, write in a journal? Can I just sleep in through this? Because that's probably what I would just end up doing. Every morning that you want. And this is important because when you get what you want out of your head and you physically put them on a piece of paper, research shows that you're 42% more likely to achieve those goals simply by writing them down. That's pretty cool. Secondly, your mind... Mel. That 42% is an awfully specific figure. I mean, I checked in the description of this video and there's there's no links or anything. So like, where is she getting this from? Like, where 
what kind of study? What kind of research was it? Was it like a huge, you know, multi-center randomized trial? Or were we talking about like interviewing, you know, 20 undergraduate students? And then this is how we came up with 42%. It is, it's very different. You know, she can reel off 42% like that. But what? Where like she thought it was important enough to mention the forty two percent, and she apparently either has it on her teleprompter or she has it memorized. Where did you get that from, and why can't you link to it in the description so that I can like actually see like if it was a reputable study or not? I mean, not that it really matters. It's not like it's gonna kill you to write down your your desires every morning or whatever. I mean, I wouldn't expect them to change for me from morning to morning. I kind of know what I want, but um. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, see, that's what I don't like. It's kind of this angle here where we're talking about like according to science and then you can I mean, I can say that anything. I can be like, well, you know, according to research, if you drink a, a rock star energy drink, you're 55 percent more likely to get a raise the next day. According to research, see, I can see I can do it, too, but that doesn't make it true. <laughs> You can't like, especially, especially in psychology, you can't just hear someone like rattle off something that was found in a study because unfortunately, a lot of psychology research is kind of not, not all of it, but the, the problem is, is number one, there are some studies where they're just not very well designed. And number two, what happens a lot in psychology research is the 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 mainstream like pop psychology media and reg just general media will see that and then and then they will just extrapolate wildly far beyond like what the paper actually said or what it actually concluded to the point where it's just like you're just making this up with the with what the media is saying that the study found so i'm gonna guess that this is perhaps what we're seeing here because when someone's just listing a study like that, you really don't know anything about it. You don't even know if writing down the goals was actually the intervention that was done in the study. Like what if it was just them speaking their goals? Like was it actually writing them down and was it five of them? Is your entire um, method based on, based on this study or just the writing down? You know, that's, it's so vague is paying attention and when you take deliberate action and you write down what you want you are signaling to your brain that you deserve to have these things you are signaling to your brain that you do want those things you're not just going to think about them these are things that matter to you and that helps train your mind to allow you to let the desires flow through you because right now you're not manifesting properly because you're not even allowing yourself to dream with the lid off. So that's step number one. You're gonna start writing down five things that you want every single morning as a way to train your mind to let you dream freely. So a couple things about this little practice of writing down five things that you want every morning as a way to train your mind to allow you to dream again. First of all, you can write down the same five things every day. It's your list, your dreams, you get to do this how you want. The second, thing that you could do is you could just write down different things every day. It doesn't matter because really what manifesting is, is manifesting as a way to train and prepare your mind, body, and spirit to help you. And if your mind is blocking you and your mind won't even allow you to fully want the things that you want, like for example, maybe you want to be a New York Times bestselling author, but you won't even write that down because you don't think it's possible. If you won't even write it down because your self-doubt is stopping you, you're not dreaming with the lid off. And so this simple exercise, write down, I want to be a New York Times bestselling author. I want a house by the beach. I want to take my family to Disney World. I'd love to meet the love of my life. I'd like to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I want to open a wine bar. I'd love to get in the best shape of my life. I'd like to do a handstand this year in yoga. I'd like my dog to start barking at the neighbors. Whatever you want, it doesn't matter. You're just training yourself to dream. And that's step one. Allow yourself to want what you want. Step number. Okay, some of those goals that you listed are doable. And some of those are only doable if you have 
enough good luck. Okay, like New York Times bestselling author. Yes, being a good writer will help and there are things that you can do to make it more likely. But at the end of the day, it's going to at least partially come down to luck, getting the right person to read your book or and stuff like that. It's like there's going to be a massive component of luck to that and with any field, as you know, writing, um, music, there's there, to make it really big like that. You're it's going to require luck, like just being good at it is not going to be enough. You have to be good at it and then also be lucky. So some of those were goals that um, require luck and Others of those were ones where if you just do all the right things, you will get them like the best shape of your life. If you just do all the right things, then you will achieve that. But New York Times bestselling author, there's no like guaranteed set of steps that will get you there. There's steps that will enable it, that will make it possible. There are things that are necessary to become it, like you need to write a book, but that alone is not going to get you on there. You you have to have luck. And I feel like that's something that is not being really considered here in terms of this whole dreaming with the lid off thing. There are things where if you do A, B, C, D, you will get the thing. And there are things where you need to do A, B, C, D, but after that, it's out of your hands. Uh, and I don't know. I, I think I'm not trying to kill your dreams or whatever. I'm just saying that there is something to be said for being realistic. Like, because it's it's almost like you're trying to say, well, let me teach you how to manifest so that you can know how to win the lottery. You know, because it's because there's the the bigger this dream gets, the more it's going to re to rely on luck. That's just the way it is. And so I think it is just a gross thing for someone to not acknowledge when luck is required. Um, especially because, well, she's a published author. You know, she's a very successful motivational speaker and she's a very, so to her, she she probably doesn't agree that it's luck. You know, because she, she got the thing that you want. Which, you know, is an example of survivorship bias, which is where something seems more likely to happen because the people that it has happened for are are more visible in the overall sample. So, for example, uh, really successful authors, published authors, New York Times bestselling authors. It is very easy to think of examples of authors who became New York Times bestselling authors. Because they're incredibly visible to us because they're New York Times bestselling authors. But we're not aware of how many authors there are who wanted to become New York Times bestselling authors and never did because they're invisible to us because they never made it big. So how would we know who they are? And so it makes it seem like it is more likely that you will become a New York Times bestselling author than it actually is because the examples of success are so much more visible to us. Number two for manifesting properly according to science is you must visualize the steps that lead you to the thing that you want, not the end goal. This is a major mistake that people make. They manifest improperly because all they do is focus on the end goal. If you've ever made a vision board, think about what you put on the vision board. You put up just the beach house or the million dollars in the bank or you crossing the finish line or you launching that business or you having the body that you want or you driving the Maserati, whatever it is, the end goal is what you put up on a vision board. That is not what you're gonna do when you manifest. What is the point of that? Like, what? Are you worried that you're going to forget? Like, oh. I, I couldn't remember. Like, did I want a car 
or do I want to not have a car? Was it that I wanted a new car or do I want a piece of shit? Fuck, I can't remember. I, sh I knew I should have written this down. If you start focusing on crossing the finish line of the marathon, that is a one-way ticket to being unmotivated and completely discouraged. And I agree with this. This is why whenever it is, you know, too icy out for me to run outside uh, and I have to um, endure the existential crisis that is a treadmill, I just, I have to put, I take my hoodie with me and I put that over the entire top thing so that I just can't see it. <laughs> Otherwise, I will just stare at it. <laughs> In fact, research shows that if all you do is focus on the thing that you want and you just focus on that vision of you and your bikini body or you with the love of your life on your arms or you with the uh, Oscars winning that award or the Grammys, Again, with the luck goals, like that's because, you know, it seems more likely than it is that you could become a movie star because all of the people that tried to become a movie star that you can think of are movie stars. You don't think of everyone who went to central casting every day. God, like if it were as simple as if you just visualize it, you'll become a Grammy nominated singer songwriter like what? Like, come on. The sound cloud wouldn't exist. What happens is because you've only focused on the end goal, you start to feel really unmotivated and discouraged because you're nowhere near it. Yeah, that's why you haven't won an Oscar. That's where manifesting comes in, because we're not going to focus on the end goal. You got to pick something that you want in order to get started. But manifesting isn't about the end. It's about the bridge. It's about going from where you are here to where you want to go. Imagine that there is a bridge that connects where you are right here with what you dream about doing. Now that dream could be to be a Grammy Award winning singer songwriter. That dream might be to have a family of your own. That dream might be to have a beach house or a ski house or to take a trip to Fiji. That dream can be whatever the hell you want it to be. But when it comes to manifesting, once you've given yourself permission to dream with the lid off and really want what you want, feel the pull of that thing. Now we got to talk about the path that connects where you are with where you want to go. The path is being in the right place at the right time. And this is all about visualizing the little steps. There's a Visualizing myself being in the right place at the right time. A lot of research that proves why visualizing the steps is the most important thing that you could Okay, then why didn't you link any of it in your description? ...could do. There was a study done at UCLA, for example, where they were researching manifestation and the power of visualization, and they broke students... Really? Is that what it said in the paper? I don't know because I haven't seen the paper. Did it actually say manifestation in the power of visualization? Students into two groups and they had group A, we're going to call these the vision board group. They had group A close their eyes, visualize in their mind and feel in their body themselves taking the test and then walking up to a board where the tests scores were posted and finding their name and seeing an A plus. That's what group A, the vision board group were told to do, to visualize themselves achieving what they wanted. Group B, we're gonna call these the hard workers. These students were coached in this research project to close their eyes and to visualize going back to their dorm room, sitting down at the desk and studying and staying up late and putting in the work, studying and preparing for the tests. Now, let me ask you a question. Which group do you think did better? Whoever studied more. On the actual test. Was it group A, the vision board group, who were taught to visualize and picture themselves walking up to a board and seeing the A+, or was it group B, 
the hard work group, the group. Whoever fucking studied. That was taught to close their eyes and visualize and seeing themselves doing the work to study for the test. Well, if you answered group A, you're wrong. If you answered group B, you got the correct answer. Well, I would think so. I hope nobody said group A because like based on what you're spouting out here, it would be really weird for you to bring up this study if it were group A. But here's what here's the thing. You can say that all you want. How many people were in the study? How many people were in each group? What was the breakdown of the attributes and demographics? Did one group study more than the other? What were the complete instructions that were given to each group? Why wasn't there a control group done that did that had no intervention at all? Who wasn't told to visualize anything? Did they do better? We don't know. We don't know if it was on three students. We don't know if it was a hundred students. And furthermore, even if we knew all of that, undergraduate students, usually white students, are not everybody. And um, taking an exam is not the same as uh, as real life. Okay. Trust me, I'm an extremely good exam taker, but that's it. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, it sounds pretty convincing if you just surface level are just kind of letting it wash over you. But really, like, that doesn't that really doesn't say a lot because that study could be a fucking disaster or it could be a really compelling study. But I'm going to guess that it's closer to the former. The reason why Group B the students who visualize studying for the test got better test scores is because when you visualize yourself doing the work, visualizing it leads you to doing the work. Okay, I'm going to guess that this was not a randomized controlled trial, which means that you cannot actually make a inference about causality because it's just a correlation without being a randomized controlled trial and you didn't have an actual control group you had two different intervention groups so you had two experimental groups one was visualizing success the other was visualizing working you didn't have a control group unless you're not telling us about the control group so you actually cannot infer causality you don't know what caused what so don't tell me that you did if you want to use the science use the science but use it right okay because i'm going to call you out if you're not work and it's only through actions that you will get the result that you want. Pre uh, how do you know that? You, you are just, you are extrapolating wildly from what sounds, frankly, like a very flimsy study. Pairing your mind and visualizing yourself doing it lowers your resistance and leads to you taking the action. That's why manifesting works. You know, the same is true in sports. There's all kinds of research in sports psychology. In fact, our Olympic athletes for the U.S. Would you care to share any of it? This Olympic team, they hire sports psychologists to train our top Olympic athletes. Oh my God. Do you really think that the reason they have sports psychologists is for manifesting? No, it's because a huge component of athletic performance is nerves, anxiety, is and and they're not allowed to be on any medication so you can't take your medication for anxiety so you you need to be in the exact right headspace to perform because you know there's a lot of really high stakes i would i'm gonna guess based on just knowing about sports that most of that sports psychology is going to be like anxiety nerves you know, getting enough sleep beforehand, how to, you know, calm down your anxiety so that you can rest up and all of that stuff, because it, that's just an, a massive component of sports performance. So I don't think I don't think the fact that there are sports psychologists proves manifesting. It, that's 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 a pretty wild leap. Also, I looked it up and yeah, most of it is for anxiety and stuff like that. Um, I didn't see anything about manifestation when I looked up the sports psychology programs for the Olympics. Particularly after they've been injured in visualizing themselves competing. When you coach an athlete to mentally rehearse every single detail about going through the competition, you are training the mind, body, and spirit to show up and dominate.
This is particularly true for athletes after they've been injured and they're stepping back into competition. You keep saying mind, body, and spirit. What does that mean? What is the difference between my mind and my spirit? Like, I'm serious. What is, I want to know what that means. Because you, you keep specifically saying mind, body, and spirit. And it, it's, it's starting to seem like you have some kind of meaning for it since you keep saying three things instead of just saying mind and body. So, like, what, what is that? What is, what is spirit? If you've been injured in competition, you're naturally going to feel anxious. You're naturally going to be nervous. Your brain and nervous system circuitry is now programmed with the intensity from that injury, the memory from the injury. So, of course, it's natural to bring that in to your pre-competition feelings about it, right? So manifestation properly, remember what it is, manifesting is preparing your mind, body, and spirit to do the work. It's aligning your mind, body, and spirit with what you want. It removes the obstacles that would normally stop you, which then prepares and motivates you to take the actions to succeed. So in the case of athletes who visualize themselves and see themselves doing all the steps over and over, they're removing the nerves. They're removing all the programming related to the injury. They are preparing their mind, body, and spirit to go in and frickin' dominate. And so are you, because that's step two. You gotta see it. How is that the same? That's like a very specific case of visualizing doing a very specific immediate action. How is that the same as trying to, you know, become a New York Times bestselling author? That's very different from visualizing, you know, a, you know, a gymnastics skill that you're about to do. That's very different from going like, OK, so I'm running and then I jump up and then I go over the vault and there's one flip and then around and then land. And then I'm catching it with my knees and then putting my hands up like that's very different from like the steps that you need to do to become a published author. That's 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 very, very, very different. One of those is like kind of a cerebellum training kind of thing where you kind of are testing out the waters on like which muscle groups are going to be activated and stuff. That's that's very different from planning out a lot of actions that you need to take over like years. Do you, does that make sense how that's that those are completely different like brain functions. The third step is you're going to feel in your body what it feels like to do the work. So let's go back to the research project at UCLA. Not only do I want you to close your eyes and picture yourself going back to the dorm room. Notice I'm closing my eyes. It's because manifesting is a habit for me. And when I manifest, I get in it, man. I close my eyes, I go into my mind, I am literally in my imagination there. And I not only can see myself doing the work, I can feel it. You can feel what it's like to walk into that dorm. You can feel what it's like to sit down. You can feel the heavy backpack hit the table. You can feel yourself crack open that book. You can feel yourself sitting at that desk in the desk light, and you can also eat Okay, but this this sounds like it's taking a lot of time and like you're already saying we're going to be up late. So maybe if we just skip this and just start studying, that might be better. But we don't know if it's better because this, the study didn't have a control group. Even feel what it's like, can't you? As the sun starts to set and it gets darker outside and the light on your desk starts to get brighter and take things over, you can just put yourself right there. And the feeling is super important because again, manifesting is mind, body, spirit. We gotta get your nervous system involved. We've gotta make you feel like you're at the scene. One of the reasons why feeling it is so important is because it magnifies the imagery in your mind. And when your mind rehearses something, here's what's cool about your brain. Your brain doesn't know the difference between you studying for that test or you doing the work to 
start that business or get healthy or put yourself back out there or heal your trauma or save the money to get that house that you want or whatever it is that you're visualizing. Your brain doesn't know the difference between you visualizing those things and you actually doing them. Uh, yeah, it does. That's how I know the difference between visualizing something and actually doing it. I, I know the entire time whether I'm actually doing something or if I'm visualizing it. Okay, if I didn't know the difference between visualizing it and actually doing it, I would probably be in an involuntary psychiatric hold right now. Okay, so I do know the difference because I know the difference. That means my brain knows the difference because I am my brain. Like, <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't? Know? Yes, it does. Like, otherwise, you would not know whether you were visualizing it or actually doing it. But you do know. In your mind, it's the same. So it's almost like a training run for a marathon. You are building a muscle that helps you win when you take the actions. It's so cool. And so you not only want to feel what it's like to study for that test. OK, was feeling it in the study? We don't know. Put yourself at the scene. You also want to feel a sense of pride that you're doing the work. And the pride piece is really important because was it important enough to be in the UCLA study? If not, like, why, why can't you put the link? If you're going to say that it's according to science, why can't you provide the links and citations? The pride piece acts almost like a booster. It amplifies the memory imprint. When you like bring this, wow, there I am. I'm doing the work. I'm proud of myself. I'm staying in. I'm putting in the extra work. Somebody said no, and I kept on going. I, I didn't stop when the first venture capital firm said they wouldn't invest. There I am investing again. When you feel this sense of pride in yourself, it supersizes the imprint and the rehearsing. And so it's a super important part of the feeling. Not only feel the steps, feel the pride that you're doing it. This is so important that I want to give you yet another example. Let's say that your bucket list, something on your bucket list is to run uh, a marathon. For me, it was on my bucket list when I was a young mom to run the New York City Marathon. Now, what's interesting is I applied, I got a number, and when I won this number out of a lottery system with the New York City Marathon, I was a brand new mom. I was totally out of shape. I was not at all in any kind of, of a place to run the New York City Marathon. Now, here's the thing. I used visualization to help me lower my fear and my excuses. Because when I got the number, I did not have a lot of time. If I had been a uh, person who was not visualizing, I probably would have said, oh, I don't have enough time to train. I'm not ready. I can't do this. All the excuses would have come in. Yeah, no one who's ever run a marathon has ever not visualized. But instead, I used visualization. Now, how do you use visualization for, say, a marathon? You do not want to visualize crossing the finish line. That is how you visualize incorrectly. Luckily, I knew how to visualize at this moment in my life. You need to visualize yourself going from zero to preparing to run that race. So what does that mean? That means you need to visualize, oh, there I am. It's five o'clock in the morning. Oh, I don't feel like getting up, but I'm getting up and I'm putting on my sneakers and it's dark out and I don't feel like going. I'm just going to insert here. Um, I don't know how running became just like a default morning thing. I can't do it. My times are over a minute slower in the morning. So I always go when I get home. And I think that too many people think that they have to run in the morning and that kind of turns them off from running. No, you can you can always run when you come home. OK, well, you know, if it's safe for you to do so. <laughs> um, but seriously, like when I run, if when I've tried running in the morning, like it, it feels like I'm dying. <laughs> like I, I'm just not a morning person, you know, and, and that's the problem with morning people and extroverts is they think that like there's them and then there are broken people and it's like no it's just some of us aren't like you so maybe you can stop writing articles like 
uh, night owl here's how to become a morning person like successful people listen the early bird gets the worm but the second mouse gets the cheese run but there i am going out the door alone in the cold wow i am going for i'm i'm pretty proud of myself because i'm training oh here's another thing you could visualize okay can you just but like can you do this while you're running because it seems like you could save time that way because like now you're gonna have to get up even earlier because you got to visualize it and then you got to do it like i you could like do them at the same time maybe i'm on a training run it's mile seven and it starts to rain and i keep going wow i'm wet and i'm still running I'm proud of myself because I'm out there training. It's mile 11 and my earbuds just lost battery. I don't have any more music. I got five more miles to go. I'm out here for almost another hour and I continue going. And well, yeah, you're 11 miles out. How, what the fuck else are you gonna do, Mel? It, you, wait, do you have a teleporter or something? Girl, you gotta, you gotta get home. You gonna call a cab? <laughs> I mean, if you're 11 miles into a 60 mile run, it sounds like you've went eight miles out and you're coming eight miles back. So, uh, you better just deal with it or else I guess you just have to live there. And I continue going. And I see myself completing that 16 mile training run. And I allow myself to not only feel what it feels like to push through that moment when those earbuds run out of battery, but I also feel. Wow, visualizing was the only thing keeping her from moving five miles away from her current house because her earbuds ran out of battery. Before she visualized, she was like, her earbuds ran out of battery. She's like, fuck, now I have to live here. Proud of myself for pushing through. That's how you prepare yourself for the thing that you need to do. Because it removes the obstacles that would stop you from pushing through at mile 11 when your earbuds run out. Because you've already rehearsed the moment in your mind. And then. Um, no, what keeps me going then is be is is the fact that my home is still five miles away. And finally, step four, and this is where a lot of people not naming names kind of sounds like you want to name names, though. But this one is like really important. You need to do the work. OK, you got to do the work because it's only through your actions that you will accomplish what you want. Let's say uh, that you've always wanted to climb a particular mountain, okay? There's a mountain called Haystack. It's not even that tall, so I should probably pick a bigger one. But... Uh, Haystack Mountain, Vermont, or Haystack Mountain, Wyoming? Because one of those is a lot more challenging than the other. And I'll let you guess which one. I'm gonna guess she means Haystack Mountain in Vermont, because I, I think she went to Dartmouth, so it's probably Vermont. Let's just call it Haystack Mountain. You've always wanted to climb Haystack Mountain. You pull up to Haystack Mountain and you get out of the car, you park at the you know National Forest parking lot and you make the mistake of looking up at the mountain, which is the end goal, right? Well, you should also be aware of the conditions on the mountain before you start climbing them. I realize that that's a little bit less of an issue in New England. But I'm just going to say, if you're out west climbing a mountain, um, you definitely want to look at the weather at the top before you start, because you could get stranded in a storm. It's just good advice. Please don't not look at the top before you start climbing up. And this that's kind of a good metaphor here, because she's saying, like, you need to dream with the lid off. And I'm like, OK, well, like, yeah, but you also need to be a little bit realistic here because there are some problems that could uh, that could come up you know like a storm and you notice it's up in the clouds and then you start to think oh my god that's a really far way away you know i don't really know how i feel about doing this anymore because that looks like it's going to take a really long time and then all of a sudden it starts to rain and you go i don't think i want to do this because i don't think i feel like doing this well i mean rain could like it could potentially wash out the trail. It's again, it's a lot less likely in Vermont, but because, you know, because rain happens on a regular basis in Vermont. So the ground doesn't just wash out. OK, out west 
and that's another reason that I'm going to assume she's not talking about Wyoming. If it starts raining and you're climbing a mountain, like you should be very aware of where flash flooding could happen because people get killed by that every year. <laughs> okay. Again, see, there are precautions to take. Dream with the lid off. Sure. Whatever you want. But like be real. You also need to incorporate some information, even if it seems negative. So next thing you know, you are back in the car, driving back down the road to that little diner that you saw. And instead of climbing the mountain that you've always dreamt of climbing, you've now come up with an excuse and you have abandoned ship. You now have literally become your own obstacle. You talked yourself out of it. You started to doubt yourself. You told yourself you weren't ready and that you didn't feel like it. You pull the ripcord, you're out of there. In order to have what you want in life, you must stop staring at the top of that mountain. You must stop creating excuses for why you can't or don't feel like it. And you must put your head down and look at the first step in front of you. And then you must take the action and start walking toward what you want. And it'll be a hell of a lot easier for you to do that if you have also been putting in the time every day consistently to not only see yourself walking up that trail step by step, but that you have felt yourself pushing through the resistance, the fear, the obstacles, the bull the excuses that are stopping you now and feel proud in every fiber of your being as you push through those obstacles and see yourself and feel yourself doing the work. That's how you manifest properly. And if you do that before you pull into the national park parking lot, if you look up at that mountain and you see clouds and it starts raining, it won't matter because you've already rehearsed this moment in your mind, body, and spirit. And Hopefully you've done some flash flood training then too. And you, my friend, will start walking up that trail and you're going to be proud. That's how you use manifesting to get what you want. That's how you leverage all the science and research to train and prepare your mind, body, and spirit to help you get what you want. And that's how you hack the motivation and inspiration that you need to take the actions that get you everything that you want and deserve in life. Now, I know what you might be thinking because it is one of the biggest obstacles that people. Well, that's amazing. I th Can you teach us how to know what people are thinking? Face. And that is, well, what if I know what I want, Mel, but I actually can't possibly visualize the steps because I've never done this big thing. I don't even know how to get started. Well, that's a very common obstacle. And that's why I want you to watch the next video, which is one simple trick that you can use to start manifesting the steps that you need to take to accomplish something you've never done before. Do you see what I mean about the fake sense of productivity? Doesn't it feel like we've just made some serious progress toward our goals by watching that video? Except we haven't. We're in the same place that we were before. Absolutely nothing has changed since before we watched that video. We received some very vague tips and a couple of vague, supposedly scientific study descriptions without any verifiable citations and nothing else. Oh, and cherry on top at the end there she exhibits perfectly the underlying core problem with the self-help and personal development industry she raises the question what if i don't know the steps because i've never done the thing i want for my goal and her answer is to watch another one of her videos rather than say typing the thing you want for beginners into google pressing enter, clicking on a thorough looking result, and actually doing whatever that guide says is step one. No, instead of doing that, you need to watch another Mel Robbins video. Oh my God, it's not that complicated. There's no secret that Mel here is gonna drop that is suddenly going to make you ultra motivated to finally do the first step of the goal. That information is available to you whenever you want it. And all you need to do is just fucking do it. I'm sorry, but it's that simple. There's no need for hours and hours of self-help content that fools you into thinking you're making progress and being productive when actually you are just wasting time 
consuming this garbage, time that is limited by the way, if you want to play the guitar, I guarantee you that you will see better results from practicing the guitar for one hour than watching motivational videos for one hour. That sounds incredibly obvious, but given that the self-help industry is continuing to thrive, that fact is apparently not so obvious. Anyway, this is all just my opinion. If you if you like this stuff, have at it. I just I hate to see people wasting their money or worse, their time on this nonsense. All right, everybody. I've been Mac. Peace out. Bye.